the remnant, sons and daughters of God, children of the Most High, sitting in heavenly places with our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, right now and today. Discuss what's going to happen um, uh, when and if we are to be martyred. To be martyred is to be killed uh, for uh, the sake of the Lord and for the sake of the gospel. And it's, you know, it, a lot of people don't like to think of it. But um, since none of us are going to take the mark of the beast, it must be considered. You know, and it's it's not a bad thing to be martyred. It actually, it's a it's actually a really um, honorable thing to be martyred. And I'm going to show you in just a minute. We're in a, a Re Revelations chapter 20, and it'll be uh, verses one through um, four. I'll be, explain, explain it a little bit to you because it talks about martyrs. Now, after Jesus died, there were there was thousands of thousands and thousands of martyrs after the Lord, um, because he was the the very first martyr. I mean, there was so many martyrs, and they 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 ran out of trees because they were they were killing them on crosses, such as um, like our Lord and Savior was killed, you know, and they they actually ran out of trees. Uh, trees became very scarce that they killed uh, so many different uh, Christians. And, you know, it. Uh, this is not one of my favorite subjects to talk about because, you know, when you think of death, you know, being killed, you, think, you know, you instantly think about what you saw on TV or a movie or something like that. This is, I don't know how to compare it to those sorts of things, um, but it's a, it's an honorable thing to be uh, killed for God, to be persecuted for God. Now, not everyone will be uh, martyred, not every one of us. See, the Lord has a certain number of martyrs, and if you are to be martyred, then um, you've already been selected from the foundations of the earth to be martyred. So you will be. Unless, of course, you, you, you go ahead and take the mark of the beast, which you're, which you're not going to do. So we don't know who will be martyred. We've, we've, there's examples on TV um, of martyrs you know, being killed in certain countries and stuff and set on fire and heads cut off and stuff like that. And it, it's hard to swallow. But we must consider it because uh, there's people that, there's a lot of people that hate Christians. They hate us. But, you know, when you're martyred, that means hundreds of others will be saved because of your, uh, your death, your martyrdom. That's the way that it happens. There is a, there's an example. There's a testimony of a, a prophet of God that um, was, was with the Lord um, one day. He saw him every single day. His name is Neville Johnson. And um, he was caught up in a vision or, or something. But he was, with, he was with Jesus. And they were all on horses, these white horses. And uh, there was a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, people there. And there was, you know, like these young teenagers and such. And he, he was there. He was really there. He could see it. Um, and the Lord uh, said, hey, I need a martyr. And there's, there's uh, these hundreds of teenagers, maybe even thousands, of teenagers on these white horses. And they're all raising their hands and saying, me, 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 I want to be a martyr. I want to be, I want to be, let, let it be me. They were all, they all wanted to be. A martyr and, and Neville Johnson, you can find him, his information in the description there. He's got playlists on this channel. He's a great teacher. He's with the Lord right now, but he, he walked with God every single day. You would see him. God would take him all over the place, all over the world. He did missions for God. He went to Queen Elizabeth Castle, gave her a message, went down into hell and all that. But anyway, that's Neville Johnson. Um, 
But uh, and Neville was saying, what is wrong with these people? Why are they fighting to be killed? Why are they fighting to be martyred? He just couldn't understand it. But they knew they knew the value of it. They knew how 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 strong um, the importance of it. They knew how honorable that it that that it is to be killed for the Lord. So he picks a a young girl, probably about 16, 17 years old, to be murdered. And she jumps off the horse and um she's she's running towards this village. And this village is firing bullets at her. I mean, I mean, machine gun type bullets are coming, are just coming at her. No one in that village was saved at that time. Not, not that we know of. And everything kind of slowed down for a second there. And you can see these, he could see these bullets coming. They were coming in slow motion. And um, she got hit. But right before she was hit, her spirit left her body. So that, that leads, leads me to believe that you won't feel anything. You see, it's the act that counts. It's the boldness, it's the braveness. But her spirit left her body. Then there was this, her body dropped to the ground, but her spirit wasn't in her body. She was back on her horse again. Then there was this, uh, like, this wave that he saw that went towards the village. It was a huge, like fiery type wave that went towards the, the village. Now this is important. This happens. This is the reason why martyrdom is so important. And this is what happened when Jesus died on the cross for us. The same thing is going to happen for us. We're, we're that important. Wave, fiery wave went to, towards the village and it saturated the village. It went all through the village. And instantly he knew and he could tell that hundreds of people in the village were becoming saved. They were becoming born again Christians, all because of one martyr. Now, if you're martyred, it might be your entire family that gets saved. A lot of us need that. A lot of us want that. If someone else is martyred, your family could be saved. You see, a whole village in Africa could be saved. A whole country could be. We don't know how many thousands, how many hundreds of people would be saved for martyrdom, but there's. Um, there's a certain number, and, I'm, and it's probably a lot of uh, martyrs. And, um, you know, you don't know when it'll happen or how it'll happen, but someone could easily, you know, one world military force could uh, come knocking at your door one of these days saying, hey, you got to take this chip. You guys aren't registered. You haven't taken your chips. And uh, you, either you take them or you're going to come with come with us and we're going to, uh, we got to take care of you. You could, you could be killed right then and there or you could go with them and, and be killed somewhere else it doesn't matter but you'll be a martyr because you'll be saying Jesus loves you and so on and so forth and then you'll be with the Lord instantly you see there is no death for for a martyr the body will be the body will you know die but we don't really want these things anyway you know they're up to no good all the time anyway our spirits are pure and holy, and that's that's who we really are. So, anyway, in Revelation 12, chapter 20, I'm going to read a little bit here. And I saw an angel come down. Now, this is John, one of uh, Jesus' disciples, the last one to die. He was boiled in oil. He was uh, sent to this island all by himself and everything as an outcast prisoner. And I, and I saw an angel come down from heaven uh, having uh, the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And um, he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, and um, that old serpent the is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up uh, and um, set a seal upon him that he should uh, deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a 
a little season. I saw the I, and then, and I saw thrones. Now these thrones they're important. Now now we're in the thousand year um, reign of the Lord Jesus Christ here on earth, and there are thrones there. Okay, John is seeing this, and uh, they sat upon them, and judgment was given to them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had uh, received uh, his mark upon their foreheads or their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. All right, so this is pretty important. So, you've been you've been killed. You've been martyred for Christ. This is a this is how special it is. Um, I saw thrones. So now you now you're you're gonna you've been selected uh, to sit on a throne because of your martyrdom. I saw thrones and they sat upon them. Now you're sitting upon a throne for one thousand years with the Lord Jesus Christ in the new, brand new world, brand new millennium. Um, getting ready to help rebuild the earth because it has been destroyed. Um, it has been torn up. It's been a huge earthquake that destroyed the earth. World War III, and the earthquake did the most damage. It rearranged the entire planet. So I saw thrones and they uh, sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. So now you're a judge. You have a throne. You're a judge now. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded. If they take your head, go ahead and let them take it. This is, this is an honor. This is a privilege. Others will become saved because of you. And you will get yourself to, be, you will get to sit on a throne with the Lord Jesus Christ for 1,000 years. And to be a judge, he will teach you how to judge. Because none of us know how to judge. We've been taught how to judge all wrong here. But now we got a per we got a teacher, Lord Himself, and many assistants, angels to help us. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded, and uh, for the witness of Jesus, for the word of God, and which not and, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had. Uh, perceived the mark upon their foreheads or on in their hands. So don't take the mark of the beast, no matter what. It doesn't mean you're going to be martyred. It, 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 you, that is a possibility, though. You could be swooped away, translated somewhere else on the, the earth just as, just as easily as God might have another plan for you. Everybody's not going to be martyred. You have to be chosen to be martyred. And you were, if, if you were chosen to be martyred, uh, you wouldn't know it, you, but uh, you would be chosen to be martyred long before now, <laughs> thousands and thousands of years before now, so, from the foundations of the earth. And, um, and they lived. These are, these are all martyred people. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. So you get to live with Jesus for a thousand years, a thousand these earth years, I'm assuming, you know, because, yeah, because time is still going to be, be the same here on earth, but you're going to be in a spiritual body. So, um, you'll, you'll be, you'll be, it'll be different dimensions, different times. It's, I won't go into that. So it's for a thousand years. You get to you get to work with Jesus Christ. Now, that's a privilege and an honor. Not everybody's going to be able to do that. And not for, for all eternity, very few people are going to be able to say that they got a chance to um, rebuild the earth for 1,000 years with the Lord Jesus Christ. Not many of us will be able to say that. So that's going to be an honor and a privilege in itself. And um, martyrs that are dressed in white and their, their wounds are, are 
or they glow uh, from what I understand. They, um, they're, they're, they're very special people. They're very special. Um, so, and so we'll just leave it at that. And so consider it and think about it and refuse the mark of the beast and rule and reign with Christ. He has other jobs also too. A lot of us will go into the wilderness like the Israelites did. And they had food, water, shelter, heat in the, uh, at nighttime, air conditioning in the daytime. They lived pretty darn good. Their clothes never wore out. Their shoes never wore out. They, they were all 100% healthy from the oldest to the youngest. And they were all very sick when they left. Most of them were. So that's another option. So, so think about it and consider it. And if you're watching this video, um, it's you're supposed to be watching it. The information is, is good and it's valuable. And always say no to the market of the beast because it's going to be happening here within the, in, the, in the next 11 years. Okay. And teach your kids. Uh, not to take it you know it's a it's a ruthless world and they will they will do anything to get you to to say yes and to take it because they want your soul but the devil wants your wants your soul he wants you to be in hell with him for all eternity he wants you as a trophy and the people that take the mark of the beast there's no way out of it you are going they, they will go to hell and I'm sorry to say that this is not a subject that I like to talk about at all. It's not my favorite. I like to think that everybody in the world is righteous and good people. You know, that's what they taught me in college and in school. And now I'm finding out it's not true, you know. But, um, but press into the Lord. Stay strong in, in Christ. You know, grow with him on a daily basis. You know, it is, it is so necessary to grow in, daily with the Lord, to wake up with him, to go to, 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 to talk to him until, until you go to sleep at night. You know, pray, talk to him in your mind, you know, to speak in tongues for a couple hours a day, you know, while you're working or while you're driving or before you get out of bed in the morning. Strike up a conversation with God and say, good morning, sir. How are you today? To worship him. If that's what you like to do, if music is your thing, worship them. You know, 15 minutes, half an hour, you know, two or three times a week. And raise your hands up to him. Raise your, he loves that. He created us to worship him, and you will have his undivided attention when you're worshiping him. So, if you go to church, be loud with worship time, you know. All right, so in Psalms 91 is always going to be your, your best um, uh, uh, solution uh, through, you, through these tough times. You know, this is a, the tough times that are coming. Well, they, we have, a lot of people are having tough times now. They're losing a lot of things. You know, I understand, you know, from one of the prophets that have, has been teaching me, you know, that um, over in uh, uh, one of the countries, who I, f I forget which country it was. I think it probably was India. I think he, that's where he lives at. Anyway, and he said this um, this lady. She was she was super super rich before uh, she was flooded out. It was this huge flood type tsunami type flood that came through her city where she lived, and she had she had a lot of a lot of money. She had like five million dollars. Um, I, it probably was in stocks or something like that, but the economy uh, was destroyed over there. And um, now, at that point, when he spoke with her, she, she she had lost every penny. So she went from having $5 million to $0 and, then, and became a beggar. So we, we don't know what's going to um, happen to us. So we need to, be, you know, always press into the Lord because... We can have everything one minute, it, it, and this is going on all over the world. People have jobs at one today or yesterday. They had houses. They had apartments. You know, they had cars. And then they woke up today, 
and they didn't have any of those things because of tragedies of some sort. You know, look at what's going on around the world. People had everything one minute, and then the next minute, they didn't have anything at all. And all they had was the clothes on their back, and that's it. And some, some people barely had any of those on their back because they were woken up in the middle of the night, and they had to run out of the house with nothing. So it's really time to press in. And uh, we don't know, you know, these are some tough times, and the times are getting tougher. But uh, God will take care of us. Psalms 91 teaches us how he'll take care of us. So we'll just, uh, we'll just do a short declaration of 10, Psalms 91, 10 through 12. Ready? There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. For they shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for dying on the cross for us, Lord. We love you. And Father, we thank you for forgiving us as we live in repentance. We thank you for forgiving us of everything that we've ever done wrong. Lord, most high God, Holy Spirit, we thank you that there shall no evil befall us in, these, uh, in the times to come, Lord Jesus, because it's going to be tough times coming. And some of us are already experiencing tough times, Lord Jesus, that no evil shall befall us. Um, only the tests that you allow and the trials that you allow us to go for, through as you build us and um, build us up to be exactly who we're supposed to be to fulfill our destinies here on earth, Lord Jesus Christ, to rule the universe, you know, in preparation to ruling the universe with you one of these days. There shall no evil befall us, Lord Jesus, and we thank you that for that. Neither shall any plague near, come near our dwelling. And Lord, we know there's plagues going on around the earth uh, right now, and there's more to come. And we thank you for this honor and this privilege that they won't come near us. And we thank you that you uh, shall give your angels charge over us, and you have been giving them charge over us to birth, that you give your angels charge over us, each and every one of us as individuals, to keep us in all of our ways, Lord Jesus, to keep us on track as we press into you more and more and try to get to know you and trust you and have more faith in you every single minute of the day, Lord Jesus, because it's important to us. We thank you for these wonderful um, angels, our our servants, Lord Jesus Christ, that they shall bear us up in their hands. Yes, Lord. We appreciate that. Lest we even trip or dash our foot against a stone, they'll catch us and they'll move us back into the place that we, we should be going, Lord Jesus. Just for pressing into you and just for knowing your name, Lord, and just for believing in you and just for trusting you and just for growing with you, Lord. And we just honor you and praise you, Lord. And Father, there's a lot of people that, that need your help today. People need fresh water. They need food. They need a place to live. We pray that you can bless all these people. And show every individual that you love them very, very much, Lord. And, and, you know, once you start feeding them, sheltering them, giving them fresh water, never stop, Lord. Let every, like I said, let everyone know that you love them very much. And just lead and guide the world, Lord Jesus. Save every soul. Have your perfect way in every situation, every single situation, in every individual's life from now on, Lord, is what we pray. We give you all the honor, the praise, and the glory forever and ever. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. Subscribe to the channel. If you like, give a thumbs up uh, so others can. Thumbs up to are important, so it's the Thumbs Up Ministry, so spread the gospel by giving a thumbs up. And you guys have a, oh, leave a comment in the comment section if you, if you want to, too. God bless you guys in the mighty name of Jesus Christ forever and ever. Have a great day.